I'm with Karen Dunham from Living Bread International Church in Jerusalem. Now, Karen, what is Living Bread Church? Living Bread International Church is, first of all, it's a church. We serve Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, and we're building the church. But it's also registered as an NGO in the country. And uh, when was the congregation started? Um, we came into Jerusalem in 2006, but Living Bread International Church started its work in the good land in 2002 during the Iraqi war. Uh, that's when we moved into the Jericho refugee camps. Yeah, you say you have a work in Jericho. What do you do there? Um, right now, they're partnering with the UN schools, teaching English. Uh, they've got home churches. I think they said they have 24 home churches. Just preaching the good news and making disciples. Are you actually in the refugee camp in Jericho? Uh, yes, they, some of the home churches are in the refugee camps. How easy has it been to actually live in the, the refugee camp? When I first lived in Jericho, of course, my car was blown up. I had many house fires, lots of death threats, but the stronghold of terror has fallen in the city of Jericho. And the people of Jericho want peace. Uh, they're hungry for truth. It's quite an amazing city, really. Do you feel that um, the local population has seen your stand as a believer and that they've respected the fact that you've stood there all this time? Yeah, for sure that when the storms came and there was wars and there was so much trouble between the Jericho people and the IDF and Israel and trouble between us as Christians and the Muslims, but we didn't leave. And I think that should encourage Christians, no matter what's going on, stay the course and the blessing will come. Uh, now you actually reach out to Muslims. Is that easy? It's not easy reaching out to Muslims, but you've got to understand the Palestinians, there's six million of them. They are probably the most uneducated people in the world when it comes to the word of God, what God to, how, where Israel came from, where Jesus Christ came from. I'm talking about true facts. I mean, they're very un, uneducated, but when you talk to them, they say, oh, we believe in the holy books. And I say, well, have you ever read a holy book? And so we give the word of God out in Arabic to as many families as we can. Now we know that God called the Jewish people and, and has a covenant for the Jewish people, but does God also have a covenant for the Palestinian people as well? I believe anyone that says yes to Jesus Christ is grafted into the olive tree and in covenant with God. And every promise is yes and amen. It doesn't matter if you're black, yellow, white, gold, red. You all have a blessing with Jesus Christ. When you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, that's it. I might have been a wild olive branch myself as a Gentile. If the Palestinians can't get in, then the Gentiles can't. So, I mean, if my Palestinian brother and sisters can't get in, then I can't get in. We're all grafted in to the olive tree by Jesus Christ and his blood. Uh, are Muslims being saved at the moment? Are you hearing stories of Muslims being saved? Uh, yes, every Muslim that you meet will tell you that they believe in Jesus Christ, okay? They believe that he was born of a virgin. No one, the problem with the Muslims, people haven't sat down and said, well, how do you think he was born of a virgin? You know, it takes God to, to have a woman, have a, a son that's born of a virgin. So the wonderful thing is because they say they believe in the holy books, it's wonderful. The door is open to bring the word of God, sit and say, look, you believe in this. Let's study it together. And it's amazing how the Lord is enlightening their hearts and how many of them are really coming to truth and they really understand, wow, Jesus Christ is real, the word of God is real, and it, they can even come to terms with Israel through the word of God. Are many of them having dreams and visions as well? Oh, dreams and visions. I mean, we don't have to actually go knocking on doors. Uh, because we don't like our evangelism is very different. Muslims walk into this place right here in Jerusalem and they'll say, I just had a dream last night. A man in white come to me. He told me to come down here and you'd tell me about Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is at work in dreams and visions. And I feel that's part of partnering with God. 
Let God be God. And God will show up in a dream and vision. God will bring you into divine appointments. And this is how the Arabs are coming to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Once a Muslim becomes a believer in Jesus, is it very difficult for them? Sometimes their family disowns them. Uh, if they come from a secular family, it's a little easier for them. Some of those that have converted in extreme situations, like our team in Gaza, I mean, they just long for more. They said it's so lonely down here, you know, to be following Jesus. It's a very lonely, lonely call because the Christians in the land sometimes are very afraid of a Muslim that wants to learn about Jesus. They show up in their church and they'll get up and say, no, you're not welcome here. So it's a very lonely road sometimes for a Muslim who wants to follow Jesus Christ. And what other projects do you do? We're doing a new and exciting project right now. Uh, we're buying goats and beehives. And it's part of our humanitarian project. And so we kind of got it set up like Jacob did with Laban prayerfully with justice and righteousness not you know with the scheming that Laban had but we're giving like the poor man three goats and every time he has two babies we take one goat back and he keeps one and same way with the beehives we feel that God said flow the land with milk and honey so we've got a really amazing humanitarian outreach going on and this is also teaching the people how to feed themselves because milk and honey is, is pretty good. You got bread, milk, and honey. That's enough to feed your babies. Now, you have a team in Gaza as well. What's the situation like in Gaza at the moment? We hear that there's rockets firing from Gaza and Israel is bombing Gaza at the moment. What's, what's the situation like there? Um, our team is in the Gaza city right now. Uh, the Muslim that works for us, okay, um, is part of a very militant family. All right. And it's very, very hard for them because they got neighbors' houses blowing up and they've got so many kids. They may have 30 or 40 jammed into one house. And it's been like that for a week. And there's no food. No one goes out of the house. The banks are closed. Now, the Christians in the other part of town that also are part of our team and work with us, they said it's so hard on the children. And last time I was there, the playground across the street, Hamas had built a weapons cache under the playground. So the Israelis bombed it and all the glass blew out. Big picture windows in the Christians' homes blew out and all that glass among their children. So they're really laying low right now and they're just praying, peace be still. The big prayer for Gaza right now is Jesus is in the boat. Pray, peace be still to the troubled waters. Now, I know Israel has a right to defend herself, but it absolutely is the will and heart of the Father for us to pray for the children in Gaza, for us to pray for those that are called by his name. There are many in Gaza that haven't bowed the knee to Muhammad or Baal. God has many of them. And so, you know, sometimes people say, what are you doing praying for these people in Gaza? I said, they said, doesn't Israel have a right to defend herself? Of course she does. But there's many people in Gaza that are called by his name, that are written in the palm of his hand. God has a big plan for Gaza. Gaza was Judah's inheritance. And the lion of Judah isn't willing to give it up for anybody. Now, Hamas is controlling Gaza at the moment. Are they planting rocket launches in heavy populated areas? Usually, when I go in and out of Gaza, what I found, Hamas's weapons cache are in mosques, underneath schools, maternity wards, anywhere that people are congregated together. Like right now, all the people are in the UN buildings, right? So, I mean, one plus one is two. Underneath the UN buildings, this is probably where all the caches are. I mean, this is just how the thinking of Hamas. Wow, wow. Now, you're from the U.S. Why are you here in Israel? I, I'm here in Israel. I had got offered a job when I first come to the Lord. And I always wanted to do something for God. So God said, come to Israel. Then he moved me into a Palestinian refugee camp. I lived in the Palestine territory for five years. 
And then I moved into Jerusalem because we're working in 27 refugee camps. Our goal is to be, to have these humanitarian goats and honey in all 27 camps, to be teaching peace through Jesus Christ, the peacemaker, in all of these camps. And we bring projects together like Jews and Arabs. In fact, some of our training for the beehives, we're hoping to get from the kibbutz so that we can bring Arab people with the kibbutz owners so that we can teach them how to do the beehives. Why do you do what you do? Because I love God. I love God with all of my heart, mind, and soul. And when I look at the cross of Christ, it's such a little thing I'm doing compared to the greatness that God did for me. What's your prayer for the Holy Land? My prayer right now is that the veil will be lifted on the Arabs and the Jewish people, that they will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is what life is all about. When you get Jesus in your heart, that's when the adventure really, can, it really begins. And it makes everything that you do worth it when you know Jesus. You have a website for people who'd like to know more. What's your website address? Yes. Our website is livingbreadchurch.com. Okay, Karen, thank you very much. Thank you. Lord bless you.